Welcome to Business Line's State of the Economy podcast, where you will find insight, analysis, and the story behind the numbers. Hello and welcome to Business Line's State of the Economy podcast. I'm your host Esron Nandri Singh, and today we are going to talk about the automobile retail sales. In May, the Indian auto retail sector achieved a modest 2.61% year-on-year growth with sales of 20 lakh 89 thousand 603 units. as compared with 20 lakh 36528 units in may 2023 in the passenger vehicle segment the retail sales in the domestic market declined by around 1% to 3 lakh 3358 units during the month as against 3 lakh 6305 units in the corresponding month last year the two wheeler segment grew by 2.5% year on year to 15 lakh 34856 units during the month as compared with 14 lakh 97778 units in may last year however on month on month basis the retail sales of the two wheeler segment declined by more than 6% against 16 lakh 43510 units in april this year in our podcast today we have mr manish raj singhania president federation of automobile dealers associations or fada and We are going to talk about what's the industry's trend is going to be like in the coming months especially with the upcoming budget and GST council meet also where the industry is hoping to get some benefits for the industry as well as the customers so without any delay let's start hello and uh, welcome to uh, state of the economy podcast uh, mr singhania to start with i would like to ask you how do you see the passenger vehicles market especially after elections and formation of the new government uh, so in uh, the passenger market you know almost uh, grew uh, degrew slightly during the month of may uh, to approximately 1% if we, if we compare y y o y basically we would we can attribute uh, uh, the degrow to a couple of things uh, last year we did a definitely had uh, passenger vehicle industry has done a, a lot of highs so uh, there's a big uh, you know mountain to compete with secondly there was a huge heat wave going on in the month of may and uh, we did a survey among our members where we we were trying to understand how has the heat wave hampered the retails of the vehicle so almost uh, 17 18% of the uh, respond uh, i mean uh, the respondent replied that they had a 17 18% drop in walk in uh, due to the heat wave and that's why hence it can be finally attributed to lower retails Second, thirdly definitely the election amounts to a lot of involvement engagement uh, from a lot of people and a uh, lot of communities are busy campaigning in uh, their own uh, constituency and uh, uh, kind of you know buying cars or vehicles takes a slightly back seat so all this has uh, definitely contributed towards slightly lower retail in the month of may and so what is the inventory levels of these vehicles right now i think there were some concerns uh, regarding the inventory levels that fada had you know discussed and also you were approaching uh, siam and oems regarding the same so what is the status on that so yes uh, in the month of may the inventory level uh, has been reported to 55 60 days now and that's almost uh, close to 5 and 1/2 6 lakh vehicles across the various dealership so it's an uh, all time high inventory that we are seeing and dealers are hugely concerned about it last time if you recollect during the same times the inventory level were going up and we started uh, uh, mouthing about uh, what uh, the concerns about the high inventory level we wrote to sim also that time and finally eventually after post covid uh, we uh, post uh, festive season we could see uh entry entry uh, inventory level settling down to and finally it set down to 40 45 days uh, that was uh, quite okay but uh, eventually uh, with the start of this financial year we are consistently seeing the inventory level going up so right now uh, hovering on 55 50 60 days uh, so uh, uh, we have been talking to ems and uh, sim and uh, we are keeping a careful watch over it we expect uh, the wholesale should happen according to the retails they should not overbill to dealers they need to reduce on inventory levels as we know we are approaching uh, june july months which would be the lowest in terms of retail because rain mm-hmm. any season kind of you know hampers the complete uh, retail process uh, and we are also right. expecting overall on an average above average monsoon 
so any kind of flooding will also uh, definitely hamper the sentiments as well as uh, uh, the retail part so we need to be very careful on the inventory uh, front to keep the dealership right. profitable so how soon do we see a, see a corrections on that uh, we expect immediately it should happen uh, uh, if uh, siam is taking a note of and they are concerned about their uh, health of the dealers they should definitely take correction immediately also we have heard oems are in interaction with our banks to increase the inventory funding trans period also which dealers are not agreed to so uh, increasing in trans period will only uh, necessitate or facilitate more dumping of stocks at the dealership so we request all the finance companies also not to increase the trans period without the consent of the dealership so with this kind of inventory sir do we see any price corrections uh, during this period sir in the sense like some kind of discounts or yeah, or yeah. some kind of price cut for the customers see any time a dealer is burdened with uh, excess inventory they will normally tend to offer extra discount to liquidate or recirculate that inventory in that their businesses so that is bound to happen and uh, also these are normally lean months uh, right. for the auto industry and uh, uh, oems as well as as well as dealers tend to go that extra length uh, to get that retail so yes right. uh, customers can definitely expect uh, good offers from dealers especially in the aging stock inventory level and so from apart from suvs how do you see the trend towards sedans and small cars now Uh, especially with the rural sentiments also are we seeing any kind of sales coming back for this two segments sedans and small cars so right now the uh, right now suvs are ruling the roast uh, they are almost 55 60% of the pv market and uh, definitely what we understand what what we feel is mobility is a necessity in rural and semi urban market so right. Uh, finally, you know, increase in uh, the prices of vehicle by almost fifty percent due to BS four BS six transition. Then the rural distress due to COVID. All these things are now being settled down, and uh, we are seeing uh, retail movement in uh, rural market. But right. yes, uh, still the gap is there. I think this monsoon would be very critical. Uh, I think uh, uh, this monsoon with uh, the right quantity quality of uh, rain. Uh, and evenly spread across india um, will definitely bring a, a good quality and quantity of crop and uh, the new in ever increasing msp support by the government will increase the fund flow in rural india so yes definitely the market is there but uh, we uh, of uh, entry level passenger cars and sedans but we are still not seeing some action in it um, mm -hmm. uh, we really uh, suv is still the fancy of the customer right now and for electric vehicles i think the new policy didn't have anything for the passenger vehicles so i think that's why we have seen some uh, you know drop in sales uh, in terms of month on month because this is effective april so from may as compared to april sales i think it was down in the uh, uh, in the ev sales so do we see any support from the government in the near future sir so uh, definitely after the expiry of uh... Or fame to scheme the government to scheme, the, yeah. yeah, temporary scheme for the till thirty first July, and mm -hmm. uh, they had reduced the uh, support that was extended to the EV industry. But uh, I think uh, uh, with the eventually now the same government uh, coming into the in power, uh, we uh, we definitely expect uh, from uh, in the month of August the fame three subsidy coming in. so mm -hmm. uh, government should take into cognizance that uh, two valuable years of ev subsidy was lost during covid where right. uh, we can we could not you know uh, completely pitch for the ev vehicles so a good subsidy will keep uh, our you know, uh, our uh, uh, a lot of uh, carbon goals are also there that we need to achieve and meet uh so for those for achievement of all those we need uh, the ev industry still needs uh, some support in terms of e, uh, subsidy uh, they should uh, take that thing in cognizance and come out with a uh, uh, an all round subsidy across various vehicles the penetration in ev pv is still hovers somewhere around 1 and 1/2 2% and, a half, and uh, it's not a much uh, you know kind of a, a, a number that we can comment upon but uh, uh, we we are also yet to see lot of action in uh, evpv space 
Because right now there are very few models available for the consumer to choose from and the price point is pretty high. So right. uh, there is space. People are talking about uh, uh, EV, whether to buy or not. They are considering uh, uh, in their you know set of buying considerations. But uh, uh, I think the right pricing and good uh, uh, range of vehicles will also affect with the right kind of support from the government will definitely give a push to the EV industry. So is there any kind of recommendations or demand from the government uh, from the upcoming budget, sir? Not only EVs, but from uh, for overall uh, industry, I mean. So uh, I, budget, so it's it would be too late for commenting on the budget. But yes, expectation I can say from the new government. We want the infrastructure push to continue. That has given a big impetus to the auto industry. Uh, we are uh, continuously see, uh, seeing retail growing. And uh, if you want vehicles uh, uh, on road, then we need roads also. So uh, continuous infrastructure push is required by the government. Secondly, uh, what we require is make uh, Bharat of India also a part of this uh, growth story. And that's why we are requesting government to reduce GST of uh, entry-level PV and uh, uh, two-wheeler from 28%, which is a cent tax GST, to right. 3%, so, uh, so that the vehicles are more affordable and within the reach of Indian buyers. Mobility mm -hmm. in rural India is, an, is a necessity. If you want to go to point A to point B, you really need a vehicle. Without that, you cannot go. So... Right. Uh, let uh, make them a part of the growth story of India and uh, uh, we should be inclusive and the only way right now and with the increasing you know cafe 3 cafe 4 norms 07 coming in bs 47 right. coming in all these all these norms will make the vehicles even more expensive how right. do you make vehicles affordable to the buyer at least for the pantry i am not talking about the high end buyer suv buyers but yes, right. for the entry-level buyer, please reduce the GST from 28% to 18% for so that his or her dream of owning a vehicle can come true. Right. And thirdly is uh, what we require is uh, good, uh, you know, uh, a substantial support in terms of fame three that will uh, give uh, that will also keep the excitement going in the EV space. And uh, right. we need buzz on the EV space so that. Uh, Eventually, uh, when things settle down, then they can withdraw the subsidy. But right now, yes, subsidy is definitely required. So in the passenger vehicle segment, sir, uh, we have seen recently Tata Motors announcing, uh, you know, Bharat NCAP certification for safety uh, ratings. And I think Maruti and Hyundai will also come up with that. So do you think this will also uh, impact the sales of the, I mean, there will be some, uh, you know, up, uptick in the market because of the certifications like customers want safety safety of vehicles and new technologies around in the in the current trend so <laughs> actually this situation is slightly you know uh, hilarious kind of you know we are a country where mm -hmm. we have to impose heavy fine for the safety of that customer who is driving a whether two wheeler or uh, you know passenger car uh, right. for seat belts and something very basic some seat belt and helmet we have to impose fine so mm -hmm. I think uh, the consumer need to understand the relevance of uh, Bharat and cap rating, and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, while and while buying a vehicle, uh, there are there would be maybe five ten consideration consideration set on which the customer takes the decision. The safety mm -hmm. rating of vehicle should be the top priority. That should be the attitude of the customer, and uh, it has to uh, you know the while buying a vehicle. The customer should give it first priority and eventually, you know, the various other facility mileage or features or whatever, whatever, they should come in second, third, fourth or fifth options, subsequent options. So it is uh, automobile manufacturers can only create uh, vehicles which are safe and very safe for, uh, you know, uh, driving on roads. And finally, eventually, if you don't wear a seatbelt in a uh, five star rated vehicles, then the what's then what's the use? So, uh, I, I think this has to be, you know, entirely boiled down on the customer to be responsible to towards his or her life and also to uh, and have the ownership of the same towards their families, individual families and start right. uh, considering uh, uh, these uh, safety ratings in their uh, uh, buying uh, consideration set and should be given a priority. Then only the uh, you know relevance or importance of 
all these safety ratings will definitely come into everyone's uh, mind and play. Right mm -hmm. now, few buyers would be giving that, you know, uh, safety rating or top priority and others would be giving some other feature a top priority. So right. uh, for everyone, the safety feature should be the number one priority. They should come subsequently. And uh, also now, I think uh, Hyundai Motors IPO is also talk of the town, uh, Mr. Singhania. So how do you see the impact of its IPO in the Indian automotive sector? I mean, there are a lot of global, uh, you know, positive responses from global media and global reports. So how do you see the Hyundai Motors IPO in the Indian automotive perspective? So Hyundai Motors, uh, though a Korean company now has become a, uh, you know, a part of the Indian uh, car buyers mindset. They have been for, you know, so many years now mm -hmm. and they have been keep it, uh, attending to the Indian consumer requirement and uh, taste and requirement. So uh, it can be really, it's a proud moment for us that uh, Hyundai Motor India Limited would be listed and uh, it's a large IPO, one of the, uh, I think, the biggest IPO. Yeah. That shows their commitment towards the Indian market and they would be generating from us and obviously they would be expanding more in the Indian market and eventually a lot of uh, expectations are out there, uh, are also there that all this money would further funnel down in setting up new manufacturing plant and uh, turning out to making India as a export base for Hyundai Motors in, uh, for uh, exporting cars to other countries. So that's a lot of commitment and ownership by Hyundai Motor and uh, uh, industry totally respects it and regards it. And we can expect a uh, uh, new range of models and uh, higher participation of Hyundai Motor uh, in, in the Indian market. Today also we saw that uh, their plans for the EV business, EV vehicles. So all any time any type kind of new tech uh, involves a lot of investment, uh, especially right. from the OEM. Uh, dealers also definitely have to upgrade according to the new technology. Uh, so all this will give a wider choice of vehicles to Indian customer. And uh, with a brand like Hyundai, any uh, extension of range, any extension of more choices to the customer makes market more competitive and attractive and uh, all these is all finally it benefits the consumer because everybody is competitive and wants to improve their services and products so finally it ends up uh, very good uh, uh, kind of space for the customer and uh, it's a great thing uh, i totally uh, uh, respect their commitment to the indian market all right and coming to two wheelers now, I think uh, two wheeler retail sales also have seen uh, you know month on one month on month declines uh, in May as compared to April. Although it has improved a lot over the last six seven months, so how do you see the uh, you know uh, the market right now for two wheelers? Is it again because of the rural factor that it has come down month on month? So uh, on a MOM, yes, there was a decline of six point six percent, but on on a YOI, we are still at a 2.5% plus. So, yeah. uh, you know, in uh, April, we had this Navratra and all that festive season, wedding season going on, which was mm -hmm. not there much in uh, month of May. So, we cannot expect the quantum of retail that we saw in month of April to happen in the month of May. So, uh, yes, uh, numbers would definitely be low, but uh, what uh, uh, what is important, it, it has grown uh, on a YOY basis. And uh, uh, what is also important is the since last festivities, we have been seeing a consistent growth in the two-wheeler two market and uh, a two-wheeler market growth uh, signifies a revival of uh, rural India, Bharat of India. Uh, yes. Two-wheeler dealers had been struggling and uh, uh, we were, you know, kind of uh, not, uh, the numbers were really just not coming, but uh, it, it has been last six, eight months, uh, it has been a good sign. And uh, with uh, with the advent of a good monsoon and good crop, uh, we are very positive that uh, in coming financial year, uh, the two-wheeler industry will do pretty well. And that's the only segment we can expect a double-digit growth uh, this financial year. Lastly, on the commercial vehicle segment also, I mean, we have seen the sales declining in May as compared with April. So uh, do you see any improvement in that market in the near term for commercial vehicles too? So commercial vehicle was definitely, you know, kind of hit uh, by the election. So elections kind of eventually leads to lesser spend by the government, stopping of payment and uh, delaying payment of uh, government projects and all that. 
and uh, uh, there was kind of uh, uh, uncertainty in the month of may and all things have settled settled down elections are we have a new government in place and uh, new budgets would be released but uh, uh, now we the commercial vehicle will immediately confront is uh, what they will confront is the monsoon season and monsoon right. season will result in you know uh, lesser transportation of every kind of goods and services so mm -hmm. i think uh, <laughs> we really need to wait more for the commercial vehicle to revive fully the major buying did happen in uh, the school segment buses and all that but yeah, uh, yeah uh, people carrying uh, uh, vehicles but uh, for uh, we it's still a bit long way to go for the complete you know uh, revival of the commercial vehicle segment also the prices uh, have has been continuously going up is a lot of difference uh, in you know uh, the price of vehicle that is also uh, kind of you know the cost of acquisition has gone up so it's a uh, it's a pricey kind of uh, product now so okay. uh, there's a lot of struggle on that front also and, and interest rate finally though settled down but uh, are on a higher side so okay. uh, we need <laughs> lot of things need to happen for uh, i mean uh, for the numbers of commercial vehicle to roll but yes definitely post monsoon uh, and with the stable government and uh, infrastructure spend rolling out we can definitely see a lot of action happening on cb industry front all right okay with that i think we have come to the conclusion uh, of this uh, podcast thank you so much mr singhania for your time any last comment if you want to if you would like to make it so i think uh, overall uh, industry is poised for a growth also this financial year and uh, definitely lo everything looks positive uh, i do hope uh, the monsoon uh, settle downs and we have a evenly spread monsoons a monsoon across the country that can play a very very critical role uh, government uh, the new government is in place we hope that they start their uh, planning and uh, disposal of their planning very soon so economy is on a good front uh, interest rates have settled down kind of and we are now looking for a, a downturn in interest rate so everything is looking positive if everything falls in place uh, i think uh, the auto industry will definitely grow in single digit in this financial year passenger vehicle has been on a very high note but yes uh, we are even after that we are still expecting uh, a growth in passenger vehicle in single digits and two wheeler yes definitely uh, uh, double digit growth as i quoted so uh, i think uh, uh, if everything falls in place uh, we can expect uh, growth in auto industry and will continue to contribute towards the indian economy at large all right thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank you